Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek, but I am Penjen, welcome back to Imperator Rome and our efforts to unite the, at the moment, not so united kingdom under one banner, the banner of the Coratani over here in the East Midlands, that's who we're playing as, and we want to control all of this, we want this, we want to get Albion back on the map, and Albion's kind of, that's the, of legend, isn't it, that's sort of the King Arthur legend, he used to sort of uh, look after and rule Albion, all that kind of stuff, I think that would be very exciting, if we get all of this, under our control, that would mean that Albion could come back onto the map and become a world power once again. But we've got a way to go. So last time, we set this up. We set up our little nation here, and we went through all the bump that we had to do. So we went through the government, and we made sure that was okay. And then we did some technology, and we did some religion, and all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of sort of setting up and preparation before we even unpaused the game to start it. And then the game trundled by for a bit, and we noticed over here that this place... Duravigitum or something like that. These places are crazy difficult to say. Um, yeah, so Duravigitum uh, had iron. That's got iron in it. And we want iron because iron means you can train better troops. You can train better troops that have great big shields made of iron and great big swords made of iron and all that kind of stuff. So we thought, hey, I know. Let's go to here, to the Icenes. Let's have a bit of a war. Let's have a little bit of a ruckus going on. So we did that. And we called upon our allies. So we said, hey, allies. Well, our allies are the Dubunians in the middle here. And down here, the Duratrigians down here on the south coast. So we said, hey, let's go for a war with the Icenians. Would you like to join in? And they said, yes, of course we would. You're our friend. Let's go and have a big old fight. But then the Icenians have got friends of their own. So they've summoned the Trinovantians over here. And then the Cantiasians down here. So now there is a great big war happening. It's kind of all happening down in the south. This little bit up here, where the original kind of battle lines were supposed to be drawn, is not really that busy. There's not a lot going on up there. It's all down here. And look at what's going on. There's so many troops. 6,000 troops here. There's 5,000 up there. Another 6,000 there. They've got a lot of military. They've got a lot of military. That's a bit scary. I don't want to annoy these guys. I'm glad I'm allied with them because they've got so many troops. And then down here, we've got the uh, our sort of enemies, if you like. So our enemies fighting our friends over here. There's an awful lot going on. There's a fight in the channel. There's an actual naval battle happening in the channel as well, which is very exciting. So that's sort of where Brighton is, I suppose. And there's all sorts of carnage going on. Then up here... It's, yeah, it's relatively quiet. So what we need to do is, we need to conquer this place. We need to go through and conquer Icenia in its entirety. And this is something that I didn't touch upon last time, but Paradox games and sort of grand strategy games that they make generally have a concept of a war score. So something like Civ, you just go, I'm going to go to war with you, and then, yay, I've gone to war, and then you take some cities, and then you can go, I'd like peace, please. But in Paradox games, I think, because I've not played that many of them, but in Paradox games, generally, you kind of have a war goal, and then there's a war score and depending on what's going on in the war the war score is higher or lower for you and then that's obviously a good thing if your war score is high it means you're doing very well and then I think you need 10 I think you need 10 war score to sue for peace and try and take territory off them so let's go and have a little nosy at the war score so you can see here this is our active war with Icenia we click on this we will go in and have a look at what the actual war screen looks like so this is all the information that we have about the first Koratani Icenian War. And I hope it will be the last Koratani and Icenian War as well, because if we win, when we win, I was going to say when we win, if we win, then the Icenians won't exist, because our goal up here is to take the entire nation of Icenia. So if we do that, they won't exist anymore, because that land will be ours. The Icenians will not exist, they won't be there, and there will not be another Kuratani Icenian War, because they just won't be on the world stage anymore. So you can see this side is what we have at our disposal. This is us and our allies. So that's our military power. This is what the Icenians have got with their allies. And then down here, in the middle, there is a current war score. So the war goal is for us to take Icenia. However, the defender controls the province of Icenia, so we lose immediately 7 to our war score, which is quite a big hit. However, you can see at the bottom there, we also have occupied Duravigatum, which is good. That's the one we want. That's the one with the iron. Can we just have that, please? That would be nice. And then Duraliponte, and then Cambaritum as well. And that gives us plus 2.7 each time. So our kind of war score has leveled up a bit. It's kind of gone back up. But we need to control more of Icenia. That's what we need to do. We need to get more of that under our control. That then brings that top number down. And then we obviously get more points from occupying more of their territory. So that's what we need to do. Now, it's not as simple as 
that. We did just beat up some of their troops, I think. Let me kill their guys. They're running away. They're all sort of tired and exhausted. We need to summon some reinforcements, I think. That is exactly what we need to do. So in our first warband, they're not very good. The first warband are not brilliant at the moment. They're a little bit hurt. They're a little bit injured. They've got a bit of attrition going on. So let's select these. Let's try and support them. How much money do we have? 1.34 surplus per month. Let's get ourselves some fighty people in. These guys look quite cheap to do. That's a 0.32 monthly cost. We get a thousand people in. That'd be very, very good. So that's a great big military unit of skirmishers that can do some assaulting, but they're not very good against lots of things. I think they just run in wildly and just flail their arms about. They don't have much in the way of bonuses against anything. So while they're good for, you know, mass and numbers, they're not particularly effective. Uh, mounted skirmishers, I do like, because this lot have a lot. They've got chariots, but these guys had quite a lot of archers. As I remember last time, there were quite a few archers around the place. So I think maybe... Let's get some mounted skirmishers. 0.48 to maintain every month. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Let's get a couple of those. So two of those mounted skirmishers. That'll be very good. And we don't have to go over here and to, you know, say, right, you, that particular town, train these up because they will just get on with it. This screen here is very clever. It just sort of says, yeah, okay, fine. These places can train those. They're quite nearby. They will train them for you and send them in, which is lovely. And then let's get ourselves. So what's that going to be? 0.48. So almost one, almost one goal per month, which would then leave us 0.34. How about then we get some archers? Another unit of archers, that will be quite useful. I'm very tempted to get another heavy cavalry, but it's 15 gold and the maintenance is just so high. <laughs> it's just such a high maintenance. Um, I think, I think, yeah, let's get some archers. Archers are good against, what they're good against? Light infantry and they're okay. Yeah, they're just a cheap kind of bulk thing that we can just get in there and they can fire some arrows and hopefully kill some people. So yeah, let's get another unit of archers in. That wouldn't go amiss. And then do we want to just get... I'm going to get another unit of these in. I'm going to get another mounted skirmishers unit in. That's what we're going to do. Three lots of those, one lot of archers. Let's get that going. That will affect our money for the long run. But of course, when we're at war, some of these people are going to die. They're going to be dead. So it's fine because some of them will die. We won't be paying maintenance on the dead people. Obviously, the dead people don't need that much maintenance, strange enough. They don't need to eat very much. So it'll kind of even itself out, I imagine, by the end of this big war. We could also have a look at inventions. Is there anything that will help us militarily? Is there anything we can do here? Starting experience, trireme discipline, military tech investment. They are not what I wanted to see up here. They're not particularly brilliant, are they? They're not very helpful. Um, national commerce income could be useful. Tribal reserve. Yeah, so the national commerce income plus 5% yeah, gives us a boost to all our trade that we're doing. I think we've only got the one trade route at the minute, so that's not going to be that good. I don't think there's anything down here that's going to really help us loads. That could be quite good. Omen power plus 5%. Our omen at the moment is the, um, where is it, religion, there you go, is the, there you go, yes, national tax. So that would go up, that would go up to 28.6. That's, that's quite good. That's a good thing. Let's do that. Let's get that. Let's go for technology and let's go for hierarchical, uh, hierarchical harus. Bisation. I don't know what that second word means, if I'm completely honest. I don't know what that means, but we'll take it. So we'll go for that. That gives the Omen 5% extra power, which means we get a bit more money out of it. Yes, please. Absolutely. Yes, we've done that thing there. Very, very good. We do need better research. Our researchers are terrible. When are they next going to do a thing? Their, their, their research is going to be finished in April 7-11. So... <laughs> <laughs> like 150 years it's going to take them to research the next one of these. 150 years! Good grief! The country could all be in flames by then. Who knows? We could all be speaking Roman or whatever. Good Lord. Right, okay. Yeah, we might need to sort of work on that. Try and get some... Uh, I mean, the researchers are quite good. They're okay. It's just the um, the general sort of research points we get are just not very much because we don't have many citizens. Maybe we can try and sort that out over here. Right, let's pop over to this place. Let's go over to Denevia. In fact, no, do you want to go to this place? Bramalovium. Maybe we go to Bramalovium and we take that. That will be quite good because they've got troops coming in down here. So if they send those up there, we can always have a fight with them. So let's wander over to here. Oh, now that's just selected our one. That's just selected our warband. We also want those guys to go with them. So yes, please. And you guys as well. Absolutely. In fact, no, no, maybe not actually. 
You guys, go over to Denevia, in fact. Oh, there's going to be a fight there. Caratina and Icenia. It's very likely that our side will win. Uh, yeah, we're going to have one of archers and... Oh, yeah, they've only got one. Yeah, they've only got a thousand men in there. Oh, no, they've changed their mind. They've thought, do you know what? That sounds like a stupid idea. Let's not go into there. Obviously, all our reinforcements are coming in as well. They will start trundling in. Right, these guys are here. They're going to start taking that territory, which is lovely. They're going to start taking that one. We need to keep an eye on things. We need to make sure that... Uh, uh, right, who are you? Who are you? Duratrigian. Right, you're my, you're my friend. That's absolutely fine. And look, all our reinforcements have appeared. So all our reinforcements are here, and they're going to hopefully come and join our forces. We are taking these two places, which is lovely. So currently now, the war score is minus three. Why is it minus three? What have we done? They control Icenia, but it's now gone to minus eight. Ah, maybe the longer they control it, the harder it is for us to take it. So we need to take these last five towns. Now we've got one of them just there. Lovely. That town is ours. This town is soon to be ours. Then we need to go up here. I think we go and get ourselves Branodunum. That would be good. I wouldn't mind our reinforcements coming in a little bit faster, if I'm completely honest. Can't see any great big forces coming in from the Icenians right now. So let's get moving. You go up there. You go into there as well. And then hopefully everyone can just be in one great big kind of army. And that will be nice and strong. Because then we need to go and assault their capital. And there's kind of a special mechanic for that because they've got a fort. A little fort, and uh, we need to take the fort. We need to siege it. Right, what's going on here? Banished by druids. Those pesky druids. After several minor conflicts with the druids of Coritania, Inamicus Corres, okay, that's us, that's our leader person, ha have unceremoniously been told he will no longer be allowed to take part in the religious ceremonies of our nation. These types of banishments can end up with the person being a complete social outcast. <gasps> You naughty druids, how very dare you. Maybe it's a time to try and appease the druids and their cast to get their ruler back in their good graces. I'm not that bothered. If he gets cast out and leaves and we get someone better in, I'm absolutely all for that because he is terrible. He is a terrible leader in pretty much all aspects. He's just rubbish. He's sarcastic, proud and aggressive. Brilliant. Um, so we could either lose 100 religious power, which we don't have, so I don't think we can do that. And he gains five popularity. Or we, we will be accepted at the religious gatherings. We lose 50 military power. And we lose 10 popularity. We've only got four. So that's probably not brilliant. Or well, who wants to be part of them anyway? The omen powers go down. Oh, that's bad. We don't want that. The omen durations are less. And we lose popularity. And he's banished until 462. So another 10 years. Can we do that? It'd be good if we could lose 100 religious power. That's one thing he's not so bad at. He's okay at getting the religious stuff in. Can we do that? But we haven't got 100 religious power. Unless you can go into negative. Maybe you can go into negative values up to a certain point. I don't know. What do we get each month? We get four each month anyway. So maybe let's try that. Let's go for that. Yes, you can. You can go into negative numbers on that. Okay, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Right, okay. Okay. Uh, that we're sieging this place. This is good. Our troops are coming in. Who are you? Yo, you're a Duratrigian. That's fine. You can stay there. Okay. We need to go to here. We've taken that place. Now we need to go and get the capital. This is very important. Now where are you guys going to? How long are you going to take to get over there? Uh, does it tell me? Can I figure that out? Oh, I don't know. Uh, 28 to... Oh, they're, they're going to go right now. There they go. And then these guys... Right, okay. Everybody is here. So the second warband and the first warband I'd like to join together. Because that makes sense. They're kind of separate now. So let's deselect our clan people. So they are retinues that are looked after by war chiefs themselves. And then let's merge those, because that means they're under the uh, under the banner of the general. And Brenwen Carreri Carrea. How have you pronounced that? that? Brenwen. Let's just call it Brenwen. And so, yes, so she's looking after those. We've got a military power of 14,000. And now we need to go in and try and get their capital. And once the capital's done, we nip over here. We go to Garianonium. We take that. And then we can say, look, you've got none of your territory left now, mateys. Can we have it all, please? They will hopefully surrender, sue for peace. And then, um, and then we get this. And then the war is over for us. But we need to do this first. What else is going on? Are they just at war with those? They've got various alliances. Yeah, so they've got alliances with... Oh, Cantasio, where's that? Oh, that? oh, that's those guys down there. Right, yeah. So their alliances are the ones that we're also fighting with. That's absolutely fine. So yeah, so that's fine. Um, anything else going on? They've got military access with the Cantassians as well. And they've got a defensive league with those at the bottom as well. So these guys are like thick as thieves. Down here, these lot are very, very friendly. Are these two going to be a little bit cross with me that I've that I've basically killed their friends? I think that might be a bit cross, but okay. Right, you guys, 
into here. Let's begin the Siege of Venta. Now, Venta apparently, yes, is the... Oh, hang on. We've lost that. Why is that just gone? Why did that just go away? Oh, no, they're taking that back as well. Okay, right. If we get their capital, that's got to be a massive, massive blow for them. And we can see that the Siege of Venta has begun. I'd also never heard of Venta. I thought, well, what's over here? I don't really know what's over here. Norwich is sort of further up, I think, further toward the sort of centre of this area. I don't really know what this is. So Venta, in modern day England, is a little village called Castor St Edmund. And, you know, it's just a small village. So this settlement did not go on to do great things. Unlike our capital here, Rate, which became Leicester, which is a very big city, you know, it's a very big populous city, this place over here just kind of is a little village, a little quaint English village, which is lovely. So here we go, right, the Siege of Venta is underway. We are sieging it with 14,000 people. And this game does it in this particular way. So there is a little sort of timer. And when the timer runs out... That's a siege phase done. And then a dice, a magical dice is rolled. Weird enough, between 1 and 14. So a 14-sided dice. Do they even exist? I don't know. But then we add modifiers. So we've got plus 1 modifier because of the martial ability of our commander. But then there is a minus 1 modifier because they have a fort because it's their capital, which makes perfect sense. So there's no modifiers. They sort of you know cancel each other out. And then when they roll a dice... It does one of those things you can see there. So if we roll a 1, there is a disease, a disease outbreak. If we roll a 12 to 13, there's a food shortage and all that kind of stuff. And you can see the different chances of what we're going to get. And really, we want the one down the bottom there. We want surrender. At the moment, we've got no chance of surrender. No, no chance at all. We've only just turned up and knocked on the doors. You know, can we come in? They've got no, go away. <laughs> so we've decided to siege them. So they've said, no, we're not going to surrender right now. But each time we do this, we wear them down. We wear them down and that chance on surrender, which is currently zero because we can't roll a 20 right now, that goes up and up and up. And eventually it could get to like 50-50 or whatever. I don't know how high it can get. So you could, in theory, look out. That chance could go to 5% and you could have a very lucky dice roll. You could roll a 14 or whatever and then they could, they could just surrender very early on. Or the siege could go on for ages and ages and ages. So let's see how we do with this siege. Uh, also, I've just noticed actually our war score is 12 against Dicenia. Why is that? Oh, because we own so many places. And we've got Branodunum. Branodunum is a place that apparently we owe. We've not got the stripies on it because that they vanished. I'm not entirely sure. Now, if we went to sue for peace now, what, what can we get? Seed the province. Ah, no, right, we need the capital. Of course, yes, we looked at this before. So we could, if we wanted to, just say, I would like some of these territories, but we, we really want the whole thing. We want this entire thing. So we need to go through and say, yes, I want to get the capital, please. So this siege needs to happen. So as you can see, the little bar ticks along at the bottom here. 35%, well, minus 35% chance that they will surrender. And the siege phase will roll round. And we should see very shortly what happens. Oh, they've got salt in there as well. That's unfortunate, isn't it? That gives them a bit of a boost. So a supply shortage. So they had a supply shortage. Now, we're obviously losing men because they're not just sitting and they're going, oh, there's people outside sieging us. They're fighting back. They're firing arrows and chucking rocks at us and whatever. So we are losing some people as well. Um, oh, no. Also, we've lost that place. We're losing places because they are going around. Oh, what are they? Hang on. You're Cantassians. You're from down here. Yeah, we don't want you guys up there much. We don't want you guys to be causing us some trouble. Um... Okay, fine, fine, right. We'll have to sort of look at that in a bit. But yeah, that's gone back to their control, has it? That's gone back to their control. Maybe if we're not in it for a long time, it goes back to their control. But then we only just got that one, didn't we? Okay, we need to do this. Anyway. Whatever the case, we need this done. So now there's a minus 7% chance. Wow, so that went quite well. That was quite a good siege just there. Ooh, hello. An offer of alliance from Parisia. Where are you? You're... Oh, you're up there. Oh, that might be quite nice. In case these guys decide to attack me, yes, I will have a little a little uh, friendship with you. But who else are you friends with? Oh, oh, botherations. I didn't mean to do that. Hang on. Can I go to the diplomacy screen for a second? Hang on. Uh, which one is diplomacy? I must get used to these. Diplomacy. Um, let's click on... Hang on. Come, come this way. Come this way. Those guys. Who are you buddies with? You're uh, allied with Votadania. Oh, my goodness. All the way up there. Right. You're allied with them. And you're in defensive league with them. Um, yeah, okay. I'm all for that. Yes, let's accept an alliance with those guys. That's that little bit of border a little bit more protected. And yeah, these big guys, because they're quite big. The Brigantians 
are a, are a big old tribe. If they come and attack us, they might do quite well. So yes, we've got now the support of 9,000 Parisian people, but not, not Parisian like down here. Not French Parisian people. Where is that? Par Parisia and then par Parisia. Par they're spelled exactly the same. I mean, that's just confusing. That's just asking for trouble. No wonder you guys vanished off the face of the earth and it's not called Parisia anymore. But yeah, that's sort of Yorkshire way. That is uh, York. Eberarkham is where York is now. So um, yeah, that's sort of York. But that's good. We've got our borders protected up that side. I'm a little bit worried about what's going on down here. I don't like the fact that they've got 7,600 people and they're taking those territories. We could do with taking this capital really quickly. Right, supply shortages happen. The, what's worrying me is that our capital is there and they are next to it. They are next to our capital, which is a bit worrying. And they're taking this territory. You guys, hang on, you've got 12,000 people. Go and kill these 7,000 people. You've got a great big army just sat there kicking their heels. What are they doing? Picking flowers? Go and, go and kill these guys. Because they then might wander into my capital, which would be a bad thing. Right, we've got a no percent chance of this, but that will hopefully go up. Right, now we have a 14% chance of surrender, which is very good. So our siege modifiers are now plus seven, because we've been sieging for that long. We've been doing so well. So now we've got 14% chance of them surrendering. Um, ah, right, okay. This could be a problem. This is an issue. Now those guys, you're Cantassians. Yeah, you're not my friends, are you? Yeah, you're from down here. Friends, my friends, could you go and help me? Because they're going to siege my capital. Now, do I abandon here? By the time I get over there, they could have had sort of several siege phases. I think I just need to get on with this. We need to take this place and hope that they don't take ours. Which is not the best kind of basis for this. But hopefully, some of our friends will come in and help us. Yeah, the Durotrigians up there are running away. Where are you running to? Can I find out where you're running to? Maybe not. And yeah, these guys, they are going to arrive in Banaventia. Oh, not those guys. They're going to Banaventia on 5th of September, 542. What? Where's Banaventa? Oh, you're, you're just going past my capital. Oh, I thought you were going to stay there and attack it. Oh, that's absolutely fine. I'll keep an eye on that. Right, did we win? No. Now our chance to win has gone up to 21%. Oh, they've left it alone. Oh, that is a beautiful thing. Oh, they've come down here. They've gone for a good old scrap. More scrapping going on. Oh, dear. We've plunged the United Kingdom <laughs> south of England. Anyway, into a great big war. All because we wanted some iron. Oh, dearie me. Right, how are we doing? Right, defenders have deserted. So now I've got a 35% chance. So one in three chance. There's some Cantassians over near my capital again. I don't like it. Could we please just do some excellent sieging and take these guys out? We still got quite a lot of troops. I'm quite happy with the amount of troops we have. Come on, come on, come on. This time around, three, one in three. No, 42% chance now. So I would say we've not been overly lucky with this. Because now we've got a 42% chance. Come on, we need to roll a 20 or a 25 on this 14-sided dice. But, you know, roll a 14. That would be great because we're adding 11 to it. Come on, come on, come on. Give us this. And, nope, still 42%. We're not having a lot of luck with that, are we? That's not going our way. And also, a fairly big Icenian army is over here. 8,000 people. They are going to go for my capital, aren't they? They're going to go for that. However, they do need to do all the sieging of it first. That's going to take them a long time. What's that? Invite to a defensive league from Brigantia. Where are you guys? Up here. Um, okay. A defensive league. Who who are you at war with, Brigantians? What 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 is your thing at the moment? Who do you like and who don't you like? Um, you're in a, def a defensive league with the Damnorians. Damnonians. Oh, up there. So you're in a defensive league with those. Um, okay. And what's that? You've got a truce with those guys. You've had a bit of a ruckus with those. And then you are allied with Cornovia in the middle, those guys at the top, and then those guys up there. Uh, yeah, okay, for now. Yeah, right, I'm, I'm all for that. Yes, a defensive league. Yes, please, absolutely. Can you come and help out? Because these guys, I imagine our friends here are going to lose. They're going to lose, and these Icenians are going to go and try and take my capital. Sieging people, we need to do this much better. You need to be much better at sieging, please, because the capital is going to go. 42% chance. Come on, come on. It's not quite one in two, but it's got to be up there. Oh my goodness me. Yes, right. Pause the game. We have taken Venter. 
The siege lasted 297 days, with the garrison finally succumbed to hunger and disease. Right, she's got a bit of popularity, which is good. The garrison were allowed to march out, okie dokie. Right, fine. So now, what's our war score? Minus eight. Really? Even though we've just taken their capital? Crikey, okay, fine. Right, let's have one place, one of you lot. Let's have... That clan, because they're they're the most sort of obliterated, their strength isn't very good. You can go over there, take that place. That won't take long. Everyone else, come this way, please. Everyone else go back over this way. You can come into here as well. We need to take these last bits. Then once we've got all of these under our control, I imagine they will not have this thing there where it says they defend, the, they control the province of Icenia, because they won't, because we will control it, and then the war score should be such that we can then go and sue for peace and get all this stuff off them. Okay, lovely. Bit of a fight potentially brewing here. Um, how do we how do we deal with this? What should we do with you? Because these guys are now, yeah, quite rightfully, trying to take back their territory, because they're saying, no, you swine bags, that's ours. We need to go in and kill them, I think. Let's go in and have a bit of a fight. You guys can now come back and join in the fight. You might be a bit late for it. Right, are they running away? Are these guys now moving? Or are they just getting ready to have a fight with us? Yes, yeah, so our guys are slowly moving around this way. Yeah, they've legged it out of there, look. They've legged it. They ran away. So when they saw our 10,500 people come in, they just went, nope, bye-bye. <laughs> right, go into there. We capture that. That is surely the end of the war. Surely, if we capture this entire nation of theirs, if we've gone through and stamped all over it, this is it. This is it. Come on. Come on. We can do this. 10,000 people. What's that? A battle is going to begin there. Oh, that's probably bad. No, we don't want you guys to go there. Stay here for now. Stay here for now. Yeah, just loop back on yourselves for the moment. Don't move anyway. Just stay there. There's quite a lot of people coming in here. Yeah, run away. Run away. Yeah, can you take this a lot quicker, please? Just take this right now. Our capital is safe. It's all good. Oh, there is a battle. They got caught in the battle. Right, hang on though. We now have ourselves 21 war score. They do not have the uh, the nice bonus they did have of controlling the province of Icenia because they don't. It's now all ours and we control all that stuff. So from 20 battles, we lose a little bit of war score. But we've got all their territory. We've got everything which is brilliant. So now, if we go to sue for peace, which we should be able to do, yep, game is paused, we can say, I would like Icenia, please, to Coritania. Absolutely, that is very, very lovely. Yes, I'm happy with that, that's good. Also, because they're going to cease to exist, because they're just gonna vanish off the face of the earth, I assume I can just have all of their gold. Shift click is add an extra 10. I assume I can have Oh, I don't know. Have they, got 100? have they got 130 gold? Have they really? Oh my goodness me. So yeah, because that, that's mine. I'm going to take this place. You're not going to exist. You can't, I don't know what you're going to do with the gold. You can't take it with you. So I will quite gladly take 130 gold off you and your entire lands. And this is okay, apparently. This is good. So I'm going to go for this. So say, yes, I demand peace with you lot. Okay. Oh my goodness. It is Ours. We have taken the Icenians. The Iceni are ours. Oh, this is very, very good. And now, because we've done that, we've gone through, we've gone, right, we're stamping all over you, bibbly bobbly boo, get out the way. We now get to decide what we do with all of their people. Because they've got lots of people. They've got lots of sort of uh, tribes people around. So after a protracted con conquest, yes, that's true, we have finally routed the Icenian armies and laid waste to their lands. Well, you say laid waste. We went in and I like to think politely said, hello, can you belong to us now? Splendid. Here's a cup of tea. Oh, we don't have tea yet, do we? Here's a cup of uh, water from a river or something. During the sacking of the capital, many important prisoners were taken, many of them having previously held important positions in the Icenian clan council, in a language in the dungeons, waiting for what we want to do with them. So we can either kill them all, we can just butcher the lot of them and say, yay, right, five popularity if we do that. We get five popularity if we just kill them all. We can say, banish those of class and put the rest of the sword. So the, the, the fancy pants ones, we sort of respect those and go, right, it's fine, you're, you're fancy, get out, you're banished, go and live in a cave, and then kill everyone else. That gets us our aggressive expansion down. That's relatively high at the moment. That's quite high. You want to bring that down. Uh, we can imprison the leaders and let everyone else just fade away, but we get ourselves some people in prison, but I lose some popularity, or our leader loses some popularity, or we can go through and decide what we want to do with each family. I think that might be what we want to do. Because there might be some that are really good. There might be some excellent families that we could stick into the government. 
Although, to be fair, our government are pretty good. They're pretty good. Also, I like the fact that we've got 170 gold now. So, yes, I'll go for that. The game is still paused. But, yeah, I mean, we could get some... We could get better apothecary, possibly. Better arbitrators. If anyone's got, like, a 10 skill or something, that could be quite good. Let's do that. Let's pass judgment on the important families. And we'll see what we can do. And then I imagine we could still, if we want to, just chop their heads off or whatever. I don't know what we do. Would we just, just hack their heads off? At this point in time, being tribal, we'd just probably just go and stab them, would we, or something? I don't know. Right, let's pass judgment on the important families. So, the family Marganus, the family Oconus, family Achaeans embrace the Senatians. So we can only do one. Is that right? Oh, no, right, I see. So we can pick. We can go, welcome, 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 and then kill the... And, yeah, there'll be no one left. Or we could say, the Marganus are good. Let's kill the rest. Right, okay. So the Margani. Okay, are you good? You're very good. Look at your military power. Oh, my goodness me. Nine, nine, seven, and one. Good grief. Uh, yeah, you've got oratory power, haven't you? You're all right. Right, you're rubbish. I don't want those. So we can kill those. Don't care about her. She's like the next tribal chief of their lot. Obviously not of our lot. I like him. He's not much in the way of religious, but he's good, good at all the other skills. That's very good. Um, yeah, you're okay. And then you're not so great, particularly. So do we... I quite like him. I'm, I think we should keep him. Let's save the Margani family. Now, can you click on them and find out what they've got? Like, what's the rest of their family like? Um, I don't know if you can find that out. But he's got a spouse and he's got a child. Oh, a little four-year-old. I can't go through and kill those. Let's let's welcome them. So we're going to lose ourselves five popularity. Oh, bother. We're not that popular anyway. We've got 23 popularity right now. So we're going to go, yes, come in. Welcome you. Yay. So they've come in. So the Margani are now ours. Look, there you go. Look, they're now ours. So what do we do if we crucify them? Right, so we get three popularity back. Okay, right, so yeah, 1.25 popularity per family crucified. Do we want to keep those guys or not? He's got quite good oratory power. I think we kill the rest. It's uh, This is this is very un, un geek company, but in terms of the stats, it makes perfect sense. So uh, yeah, if we offer sanctuary to those, that's three members. So that's presumably him and his family. Oh, wait, I... Can I kill a can I kill a one year old? I feel very very bad. Oh, they got a friend. Oh yeah, I see. Like that is it. Um, and a spouse and friend. And then you've got just a spouse. Oh wow. Oh wow. He is a proper caveman. Oh my goodness me. Look at him. Wow. The hair. Good lord, sir. Well done. Um. Yeah. I think. I think we don't need any of the others. I don't think we need any of the others. I'm not that bothered. I'm. I'm glad we've got him. That's good. Let's let's crucify the rest. I'm very sorry, everybody. I'm going to go and crucify... Oh, they crucified them indeed. I was wondering how they did it. There you go. Could we not just stab them? That seems very awful. But okay. Have the rest crucified. So we're going to get some popularity back. Uh, what's that up there? Scorned families. Right, the Margani family, who we just sort of imported in, are now considering themselves scorned. And that's because they don't have a job in one of our offices, I think it is. Uh, families... Oh, no. There you go. So it's total income... Uh, has to be at least 2% of our national income. So that family currently earns nothing. So they're very, very scorned. So they're very, very sad with us. But yes, you have only just arrived. So, you know, give me a second. She's got 10 civic power. 10. That's brilliant. Can we can, can we make her our chief medical person? Hang on, hang on. Government. Because our apothecary is not very good. Can we do that for her? Yes, absolutely. Put you in there with your 10 finesse. Yes. Health goes up 0.05. That's very good. And then maybe that will stop them being quite so scorned. That could be quite good. Um, yeah, okay, that's fine. Now, there might be another scorned family now. Nope, still the Marganis. Um, they've got 1%. They need another job for somebody. Another job for one of you. Obviously not Donus Marganus. So you're not going to get much of a job. Although, to be fair, you are a better orator. You're a better talker than our actual clan leader. But there we go. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I think for now... We might just have to leave that. We might have to leave that for the moment. Unless someone is very good at researching. How good are our researchers, actually? Hang on, hang on. Right. Research. Sciencey, sciencey, sciencey. Tech. There we go. Um, you are civic. You've got nine. You know, you're very good. You've got eight. And you've got ten. Oh, right. Our researchers are actually pretty good. They're pretty good at researching. Yeah, I don't think we need to... I don't think we can swap anybody around, particularly. Uh, she's got... Yeah, she's got 10 civic. I was thinking, oh no, she's the person. She's our 
uh, sort of doctor or whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, the highest there is nine and nine, and you've got eight and seven. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think there's a job for anybody over in the research bit, because yeah, they're already quite good. You've got nine, you've got eight. Yeah, and if we take you out, so a member of the Corey family, uh, let's, we could do that. Hang on, hang on. Right, this is what I mean. This is this is kind of the level that we get to. Let's take a look at the Corey family. Click on that. Corey's. Oh, that's us. Oh, absolutely. So we could take out that research person. So in here, uh, you take you out. You're 41 and you've got nine civic power. If we swap you round to this guy, the Marganus guy who just came in, who also has nine, that will sort that out. And that, I think, means that they get 2%. So every family expects to be paid 2% of the state income. And now they should be. So that will hopefully go away and will drop a bit from here. But again, that doesn't matter. That'll come down to 9% or whatever. So I think that should be okay. Uh, what is that? What's that? Current moral. Oh, the armies are sort of split apart. Right, okay. Right, absolutely fine. We've won the war. We have won ourselves a war and mighty glorious it was. Okay, right. Let's now move troops around. So, the clan Vodonosi retinue. Select you guys. You go back over to there, say... You lot, oh, you're absolutely battered. 1,800, yeah, you're you're not well at all. You're kind of going over here for now. You go to, stay here, in fact. Yeah, absolutely, stay there. And they can stay there. Do we want to put someone up here? No, we're kind of allied with those guys, aren't we? That's fine. Okay, right, it's all looking good. Ah, oh, yes, we've taken Icenia. Oh, and tis glorious. Look at how much territory we've got now. Oh, and it can only go from here. And we've got ourselves 170 gold to play with, which is, that's just a ludicrous amount of money. Compared to what we're used to, that is an awful lot of money. That's very exciting. Also, by taking Icenia over here, we have changed the course of British history. We've kind of removed the potential for the birth of a very significant person, because over here somewhere, I don't know exactly where, um, Boudicca was born, or Bodicea. I think it's pronounced Boudicca, but people sometimes do say Bodicea, but Boudicca was born, and she ended up becoming a military general that fought against the Romans. So, obviously, many hundreds of years from now. What are we on? 301 BC. So, yeah, so in something like 350 years or whatever, she fought against the Romans. The Romans came in when, went, ha we're all stamping all over you. We're taking your culture away. And um, I think they tortured her family or something like that. And they were very mean. So she became quite cross. And she had got a big army together and went and took on the Romans and beat them. And she beat the Romans back. And she went down so far as going to London down here. I think she burnt down. Did she burn up Colchester or something? I don't know. That's kind of around this way. I think she went to London, or Londinium as it was back then, and, and just set fire to it. Went, hello, Rome, I'm here to set fire to what, what is your sort of capital city over here. Ha ha ha. Set fire to it. And then kind of went and did some, you know, caused some more trouble somewhere, I think. And the Romans went, no, we should possibly get rid of her. And they came down here and squashed her. They crushed her. But there was apparently a moment where Rome considered pulling out of the British Isles because of us rowdy Brits fighting back. But then, yes, when Bodica was actually defeated and uh, got killed in the end, I think. I don't know if she died in battle or not. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, she obviously died at some point. And when that happened and the armies were sort of defeated, the Romans then decided to stay. But yeah, a bit touch and go. But now that's not going to happen. Icenia is not there anymore. It's all Caritania. We have taken that and it's all ours. So we have indeed changed the fate of the United Kingdom already. So we have ourselves 169 lovely, lovely gold, which is very, very exciting because it means we can finally build something. So when you go into a particular city, you can then go through into here and say, right, I'd like to build a thing. There's four buildings you can build. So you can build marketplaces, which increase your tax and your commerce income and give you a bit of civilization level because, you know, you're putting down a permanent structure. You're saying this is a marketplace. So you become less of a sort of roaming tribe and more sort of uh, you creep more toward a civilized sort of uh, empire. You can put yourself a training camp to give yourself some more manpower, so more people to choose from when you go and do fighty stuff. You can make a fortress. There is already a fortress here, because this is a capital, but we could upgrade it, and that makes it harder to do the sieging. Or you can build yourself a granary for population growth and slave happiness. Now, one thing we are lacking, actually, is slaves. It's a bit of a shame, isn't it? That's a bit of a shame. I'd quite like some slaves. I don't think we have any slaves at all. No, we have no slaves of any kind. But quite a lot of tribesmen... A lot of tribes people going on. A few freemen. Oh, and look down here. Icenia have got citizens. 
Now, citizens are the top tier. They're the top tier of the population tree. I wonder if they're all over here in Venter or whatever. Oh, no, maybe they just spread around. Oh, they are. Oh, the Iceneans were a little bit fancy pants, weren't they? So, yeah, they're Druidic Iceneans. Ah, now, yeah, that's a bit of an issue because they don't believe in our way round, which is why they've got a sad face. But, um, yeah, these guys actually provide research points. So now has our research gone up? Oh, that would be marvellous. Yes, it's gone from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. So now... Instead of it being finished in 771 or whatever the year was, or I don't know what it was, it was many, it was a long while away. Now we're going to finish the research in 557, so just over 100 years. <laughs> That's not very good, is it? <laughs> That's terrible. We certainly need to do something with that. Um, we could also get ourselves another trade route in. This is very exciting as well, because now we've got ourselves this bit over here, this province. Now, I kind of understand provinces a bit better now. This province here can have a trade route for the lands that we control, as far as I understand it, because we've got an extra trade route available. Yay! And then we go over here. That province has got a trade route available. We've already done that one. That's importing grain, I think it was. So that's fine. Um, up here does not have a trade route. I don't kind of what makes a trade route. Do we need to have the capital? Maybe we need to have the capital under control. The capital of the province, I think, gives you a trade route. But whatever the case, we can get ourselves a trade route for here. So why don't we do that? And of course, this affects our empire as a whole as well. So we've got iron coming in, which is brilliant. So we've got iron. So we can now make heavy infantry units, as it says on there, which is very, very good. We also do have a surplus of salt and of furs. A surplus of salt makes our forts harder to uh, break down, which is good. But what do we want to get in? What can we import in? Oh my goodness, there is not a lot that we can import in from Venter. Oh, there's very little. We can import furs, which is good for the military, or base metals, which is good for the cohort recruiting. Oh, uh, okay. Is that it? That's not very good at all. I assume if we pick into the place, we still get the same options. That is quite terrible. Do you know what? Let's leave that for now. I'd rather get something to help, you know, boost happiness or population growth or something. That just seems a little bit kind of rubbish. But okay, right. Let's move time on. Uh, no, let's not move time on. Let's actually not do that at all. Let's build a thing. I'm tempted to get a marketplace. Local tax, 5% increased. It does, the only thing is it costs 100. It costs 100 gold. We've only got 169, but that would be very, very helpful. At the minute, we're losing half a gold per month because of our army maintenance we could do with bringing that down as well a little bit so that could help so marketplace could offset some of that damage what do we get we get plus 0 0.10 so that will add an extra five percent onto that i can't do that maths in my head it's not very much uh, also yeah there's a bit of unrest going on which is affecting money and stuff that should start ticking back up in time yeah let's get ourselves a marketplace let's do that 180 days to build a marketplace but that's surely got to be a good thing. That's got to be very, very helpful. And then, if we're not doing a trade route, can we have another invention? What is going to help? How about then, tribesmen output? Right, hang on. Let me go and remind myself what the tribesmen do again. Okay, so our tribesmen give us a base tax level of 0.04 for each tribesman and some local manpower as well. So boosting that would not actually be that bad a thing. So it gives a little bit more tax and a little bit more manpower. So uh, yeah, they're our main source of income, tribesmen. I think because we are a tribe, we're a settled tribe, tribesmen get us a lot of money. And then uh, slaves give us plus 0 0.03. But yeah, as we saw earlier, we don't have any of those. But yeah, so some tribesmen would be very, very useful. So if we can boost that, if we go to tech and say, yeah, tribal reserve, cost 100 of our civic power, but that ups the tribesmen's output by 5%. That's probably a good thing. So let's go for that. Let's spend some of our points on that. Lovely, lovely. Uh, we spent some gold. That's okay. Is there anything else that we need to spend some of our things on? I'd like it if that was coming down a little bit quicker, but yeah, we can't do much about that right now. Oh, for goodness sake, I've been banished by the Druids again. The Druids really, really, really don't like me, even though I am a Druid myself. Is it the moustache? Come on, is that what it is? So yeah, we saw this earlier, but now we've got to do it again. So either we can lose 100 religious power and become a bit more popular, but we don't. We just don't have that much religious power. We've only just clawed our way back to 57 after, after being, were we minus 11 at one point? Uh, we lose some military power, but I lose a load of popularity because we just go and enforce it by law, but people don't like that, obviously, because we're all religious druid folks, so we're going, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, he's making the druids do stuff by pointing pointy sticks at them and stabbing them a bit. So, yeah, that's a bad thing. Or the omen thing, we can't go for that. We might have to do this again. Lose 100 religious power. 
That's very bad. Or just do this, but then he'll lose 10 popularity. He will go down to 12. Do you know what, though? That's probably not that bad a thing. If he becomes unpopular and someone overthrows him, brilliant, because he is quite terrible. Particularly at oratory, we're, we're just getting two. We're just getting the base oratory skill. And I've, I've got, I want to do some with this. In fact, we'll go and do that in a moment. But uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's lose 50 military power, which we've got. That's fine. And then, yeah, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's go for enforcing our druidic, you know, our attendance at their lovely ceremonies by bringing people with pointy sticks. Let's do that. Yes, we will be accepted, you scoundrels. Um, okay, right, move time on. In fact, no, pause time again. Uh, where was, where are the ideas? Right, in here, there we go. We've got some oratory power. Now, oratory power we'd use for fabricating claims and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to do that right now. I think we just need to settle down a bit now because, you know, we've not got much money. We're losing quite a lot of money. Manpower. Manpower is going back up, which is quite nice. So, yes, a period of stability would probably be quite good for just a little while. Just a little while. And then we can go and pick our targets again. I mean, to be fair, these guys. These guys look like easy pickings right now. They've got nothing much going on in here. What have they got? They've got themselves... Not much at all. We could go in and stamp on these if we wanted to. But again, that's going to push our aggressive expansion up. And then everyone's going to be very tired. I think we just need to let everybody sort of settle down a bit. Let the memory of that war fade away a bit. And then, when everyone starts getting itchy feet again, they'll go back in and start doing some fighting. So we don't need to save our oratory power, which we don't have a lot anyway, because our clan guy is terrible, for uh, making um, claims, you know, fabricating claims to then go in and have a great big war. So we could put it into one of these ideas. So we can have ourselves a military idea or an oratory idea. And then eventually, when we get both of these in, if this idea in here is a military idea, so if that matches, and that oratory idea in there is an oratory idea, because we could take other ideas as well, but if they match, we then get a boost. We get ourselves 10% civilization level, and our leader gets plus one to each of the primary stats. He will have an oratory point. <laughs> Praise be. So what do we want to do here? Do we want to go for a military one or, a, or an oratory one? Let's have a look what there is. So monthly corruption can come down. That's going to cost 50. We can't have those yet. That would be very, very good if we could have that. But yeah, we've not got the um, oratory advances not done enough. Uh, we could have monthly general loyalty and monthly admiral loyalty up. Or we could have maximum opinion improved by 33 percent i don't think we're going to be doing much of that right now so let's have a look at the military ones so we can have either morale of armies that sounds quite good trium cost coming down not so bothered about that or reinforcement speed and or morale recovery that could also be quite good but morale of armies is good because that's 10 percent. that means they're going to fight for longer and not run away because they're just being big and brave um okay right what do we want what's best morale recovery or morale in total, up 10%. I quite like this. The reinforcements arrive quicker as well, and they get back on to, you know, they get, they get back into the spirit of it a little bit quicker. So, um, yeah, let's go for ordered retreat. We'll take that, and that's just going to sit there for our armies. Now, yeah, so these guys should be getting their morale back a bit quicker, which is nice. Okay, let's see if we can get this marketplace constructed. 160-odd days. Let's see if that can be done. And, uh, yeah, maybe some other events and stuff will pop up in that time. Also, as time passes, these guys here are topping up their retinue again because we've got enough manpower. So they're going through and going, ah, brilliant, yes, 5553. That will go up a bit probably next month, I imagine, if we have a little look. Uh, yeah, to 6044. So these guys, and we don't pay for these, they're the retinues of Clan Vodonosi and Clan Inamichi. That's the one. Uh, they're just topping those up of their own accord. They're just doing that, just going around and going, hey, who wants to join my retinue? Uh, whereas these guys down here are ours. They are, there's a bit of actual attrition on those. A little bit of attrition, but okay, that's fine. That's fine. Maximum of seven present in that location. Oh, do we need to move you around? Oh, hang on, what's that? What's this up here? Trade offer is that? An envoy from the Pratani, where, where are they? Up there, the Pratani local power of Votadinia is requesting to import salt. Okay, as we're not currently exporting it, it would gain the following bonus. Army maintenance cost down. Oh, absolutely, yes. And it earns us 0.5 of a gold per month. Oh, that's beautiful. So, 0.5? Full 0.5? Oh, wow. So it would pay off our shortfall. It would sort that out. And it would then bring our army maintenance down a tiny bit. Which means we actually might go into a surplus. Yes, absolutely. Yes, have some of my salt. Have my salt, you lovely people. Would you like me to come pour it on your chips for you? Because that is excellent. So when we get to the end of November... 
four, five, three, abba, bay, condita, whatever it is. There you go. We're now making 0.33. So, oh, that that's brilliant. That is brilliant. We're almost getting one in commerce. That's very good. Isn't there a technology thing for that? Is there a tech thing for that as well to up our own commerce? Um, yeah, national commerce income, another 5% added onto that. Yeah, okay, right, There's there are many things that we could be doing. Um, I'm quite happy with the way things are right now, though. Let's just get this market done. It's not going to take too much longer. Ta-da! The marketplace is in. Now, I don't imagine that's going to make a massive difference. We're on plus 0 0.33. It's going to go up to... Oh, it's going to go down to 0 0.12. <laughs> I don't know what why that went down. Um, that is a surprise to us both. I've just built a marketplace to increase our taxes and stuff. I don't quite know why that's come down, but there we go. Never mind. So um, I think, I think let's leave it there. We've got ourselves a whole new big bit of land. We've got ourselves some iron. So maybe, maybe now we get rid of some of these guys. We get rid of some of the um the light cavalry possibly and replace them with because we should be able to make them now. If we go down to here, we can make warriors. Look at that. Yes, they're very good against light infantry. They're good against heavy cavalry. They're good against chariots. It's all very, very good. And you know, I just don't bother them so much. Heavy infantry, they sort of you know, nullify each other. War elephants. Yep, going to be loads of those around. So yeah, better make sure we can fight those. But yeah, I think that's what we could do. And also, yeah, maybe check trade routes again. Yeah, our trade route options are really, really terrible. That's very disappointing because, yeah, we could just get furs for starting experience of our people. Uh, oh, that's it. Base metals has gone. So somebody must have gone and taken that. They must have traded those with someone else. So yeah, that's that's not great, is it? So yeah, we'll keep an eye on the trade thing. But yeah, let's finish up for now because yeah, we we did very well. Look how much land we own. Are we the biggest? Possibly Brigantia are a similar size, I would have thought. Let's have a look. You can tell, can you tell in here? Diplomacy, there you go. So diplomacy wise... Can you see how many cities they've got and all that kind of stuff or not? Is there any way I can find that out there? So they've got 16 cities and 63 pops. So 16 cities, 63 pops. How many have we got? 22 cities, 89 pops. We might be the biggest force in the UK right now. That's very exciting. And yeah, I think we leave it there. We leave it on a high before next time it all goes horribly wrong. <laughs> so it'll all just come crashing down. But uh, yeah, I think all the other wars have stopped as well by the look of it. There's certainly less troops moving around. So yeah, it's a, it's a good point to stop. It's a very good point to stop for now. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. I am still learning about this game as I play. So, you know, there might be some bits and bobs that I'm doing wrong or that I could be doing better or whatever. So if there are, please let me know in the comments. Please let me know. I will always gladly, gladly accept when I've gone wrong because I do it an awful lot. So yeah, please let me know about things. Or, you know, if you just want to leave a comment saying it's a lovely thing, you're enjoying it and all that kind of stuff, then please do. And also, if you're enjoying it, please do leave a like. That would also be very splendid indeed and if you're not already then subscribe please subscribe in order to keep up to date with how we get on here in uniting the united kingdom in imperator rome but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i'll see you next time let's follow matt spence aka duke newcomb as he chases after a dirty villain there are a lot of angry people still i don't know why <laughs> never ever employ him he's terrible this place is full of rats Timothy Robles with your kind of crazy eyes. You have tea leaves in one of my shops. <laughs>